Hi, so up to now I've talked about different uh, polymer properties, what are polymers, polymer families and their uses in medical devices. And in the next few sections I'm going to talk about polymer processing, so how the manufacturing of polymers is. Okay, so if we remember we talked about thermoset and thermoplastic polymers. Uh, thermoset polymers were, the, were the, those rigid crystalline structured polymers uh, that once cured uh, cannot be remoulded. Uh, thermoplastics then on the other hand uh, was that spaghetti analogy I gave you of, of intertwining uh, polymer strands and it can be moulded repeatedly so it can be reheated and remoulded repeatedly by compression moulding, extrusion, injection moulding and we'll go through all of those in the next few slides. They can be formed into fibres, tubing or films by extrusion uh, followed by drawing or rolling to improve properties such as strength. So depending on the type of polymer you have, it's going to dictate the processing technique that you can do. Uh, thermosets, um, pretty much curing and, and, and compression moulding are the only types where thermoplastics, there are more options available. So we'll just go through a, a round through of the different types uh, that I'm going to cover. So injection moulding, compression moulding, blow moulding, extrusion. I'm going to talk about different vacuum technique, bonding techniques, and I'm going to talk about knitting and braiding as well. So injection molding. The types of things that are injection molded, if anyone has uh, experience of these little toy soldiers um, or Lego pieces, which I just spoke about br briefly already, and you might see a little notch at the end. That's a good sign that it's been injection molded. So that's where the plastic has been pulled away from the mold. Um, so what happens in the mold, uh, the mold is, is designed in the shape of the piece that you want to make. Uh, the polymer then is fed into the injection mold device. It's heated to a melt temperature in a chamber or barrel which contains a screw. The screw then is either single or double and it mixes the material and provides for an even distribution of heating. So it mixes the material, it heats it and it conveys it along the length of the screw. Um, into the mould and the mould, um, the, the piece sets, the mould is released and the plastic part is ejected. So there's different stages to injection moulding. The first is the clamping stage. So uh, there's three parts to the injection moulder. There's the mould itself, uh, which we have here in this diagram, the clamping device uh, over here and the injection unit over here. So the clamping device is what holds the mould under pressure during injection and cooling and it holds the two halves of the injection mould together. So it's this entire section here. The mechanism typically utilises hydraulic pressure but it can be electrically driven as well. As so you can see in this little animation here, uh, the two halves of the mould coming together. The plastic resin is fed into this hopper, it gets conveyed along the screw injected into the mould. The mould half is closed using the hydraulic um, pressure and the part is allowed to cool and then it's ejected. So the injection stage plastic is loaded into a hopper. The pellets can be gravity fed, they can be pumped or blown into the cylinder and they're heated in this cylinder to form a molten mass. The screw is rotating, it mixes the molten pellets and it forces the plastic towards the end of the cylinder. At the injection phase, um, the material is accumulated in front of the, the screw and injection begins. So molten plastic is injected into the mold cavities while the pressure and speed rate are controlled by the screw, so it's all very controlled. There is some sprue flash material which is waste and this is removed later in the process and this occurs around here. So the next is the dwelling phase. So the, the plastic at this stage is in the mould, it dwells and then it cools. It is allowed cool to its solid form within the mould. Then the mould opens which you can see in the animation here and the two halves are separated and the piece is ejected. So there are some very important processing parameters in injection molding. The temperature that the screw is at, the pressure, 
the material type so some materials will 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 melt quicker or convey faster than others um, and this will dictate the time there could be multi-cavity molds versus single cavity tools so the example previous was a, a multi-cavity mold the mold might be very complex might need a longer dwelling and cooling time uh, cost is an important processing parameter and shrinkage of the plastic being cooled also needs to be considered so if we look at some medical devices that are manufactured using injection molding um, some simple examples would be interocular lenses contact lenses heart valves knee joints so certain parts of the knee joint so the tibial plate ear parts syringes and connectors and I've just in the next few slides given um, a little bit more detail on um, the injection molding. So I'll just zone in on this particular slide here. Along the length of the screw, there are three zones. There is what is called a feed zone, a compression zone and a metering zone. So in the feed zone here, this is where the polymer enters into the screw and barrel. Uh, the screw threads are widely spaced and there is a um, space between the rotating screw and the barrel uh, for a lot of polymer to, to come in and be fed into the barrel. So this is called the feed zone. Then it enters the compression zone. And here the, the diameter of the screw is increasing, leaving less space between the screw and the barrel wall. So the, the polymer starts to get compressed, which introduces pressure and it helps the melting process and it helps mixing and in the metering zone then uh, you have a further decrease in space between the screw and the barrel and um, they're small uniform threads and they allow um, very homogeneous mixing of the sample and increased pressure to push it out into the mold Um, so this is a nice diagram of the ejection moulding, uh, looking at all the different parts of it. So to finish up, we'll have a look at some devices. Um, so typically, if you see these sort of connectors on, um, on a catheter tubing, they would be injection moulded. So uh, reasonably simple, but there is some intricacy in the design there. Um, the mask here that, that's used, the, the connectors on this uh, respirator mask. Um, this is a trocker for a minimally invasive surgery. Um, so all, all of these little connectors would be injection molded. Thank you.